Dr. Sylvia Blyden was in the well and she did listen to the president's speech and I'm sure she has already formed her own opinion about the president's speech. Have you formed an opinion already? Have not listened to what the president said? Um, yes. First of all, it is one of the shortest opening addresses given by any head of state. And despite it was so short, it was one of the most beautiful when it comes to analyzing the need for us to have a stable country. Because like he rightfully said, when you look at the background in the West Africa sub-region, there is so much instability that comes out of a lack of dialogue, a lack of understanding what the issues are. Now, for me, the president has hit the nail on the head. But I think they need to go further. The process by which the current leadership of the APC, the de facto leadership as I call them. The Why do you call them de facto when they are duly elected? Well, for example, there was no voter register. You see, everything that they are asking the Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone to do now is what they did not do in the process of bringing them into leadership. There was no voter register that was published before the elections. They beat up people, they sidelined people, they intimidated people, they arrested people, they detained people, and then they hijacked the power. So they are de facto. We recognize them as the de facto leadership. But if the government wants to succeed, if the president's call to the nation is a genuine call, he has to look beyond Samura Kamara and Nesbai Koroma and look at the rest of us, the imagined leadership. So you th so who, who do you think the, the, the government should reach out to? If you refer to the leadership of the APC as de facto, so who do you want the president to reach out to then? Well, like I just said, we recognize them as the de facto leadership. But the president has to extend his outreach beyond the, you know, I refer to them as, one thing we cannot debate is that the APC is in factions. There is no debate on that. There are many, many factions now in the APC. And you belong to and one of the factions? Most definitely the progressive faction, the democratic faction, the one that believes in using democratic tools to challenge the state authority. That's the faction I belong to. But then the faction that is in charge of the APC right now is the jihadist faction. Now what do I mean by jihadist faction? The jihadist faction is the faction that is controlled by the former president, Anes Baikuma. In public, he threatened the rest of us in the APC that if you do not do what I want in the APC, I am going to wage a jihad. I will wage a jihad against you. So he's waging a jihad against us. So that faction is in control of the APC now, for now. Bloody, one, one, one critical thing now is the absence of your members of parliament um, in the well. Uh, when do you think, are you, do you think they will be back in this house? They will come to this house? All of them were chosen by the de facto leadership. We did not, even, they didn't even tell us the process by which they were chosen. What percentage came from the votes of the people, the electorate, what percentage came from the leadership. All we know, for example, I can tell you one example in Bombali. Honorable Mark Kaloko, brilliant debater in the last parliament. His name was removed from the list of the Bombali members of parliament. And up to today, all we hear is they removed him because former president Anes Baikoma says to remove him. There was no process by which these people were chosen. They were hand-picked and given our party symbol. So how do you think? So they are tied down, that's the point. They are tied down to those who chose them undemocratically to come to parliament. So they will never defy the instructions of the jihadist faction. So do you think they will not come to the house? Well, let me make this uh, call out now to them. They have to come to the house and they have to do it fast. If they do not do it fast, some of us have the knowledge of how to use the law to ensure that a de facto leadership is declared as a de facto leadership. And the moment we get the law to declare as a de facto leadership, it means that every single action that that de facto leadership took was an illegal action. But this is a leadership This is a leadership that was accepted and vetted by the PPRC, the body that regulates political parties in the country. I'm sorry, you are gravely, you are gravely uh, misinformed. No, no, no. no, no, was, no, was no PP, did PPRC no, no, not give them a clean bill of health? Not at all. I can challenge anybody on that, and these are the legal issues. The PPRC did not oversee the convention that brought in the national leadership of the APC. This is a fact. It cannot be debated. The laws from the court, the instructions from the court, PPRC should oversee and supervise. It never happened.
So that's the facts of leadership. I'm telling them now, I'm advising them. Step up, send our MPs. You hand chose the MPs. Send our MPs to come to parliament. If you do not send our MPs to come to parliament, we have legal means by which we would ensure that a de facto leadership is declared to be a de facto leadership with no legal authority. Thank you very much. My pleasure. She is Dr. Sylvia Olayinka Blyden, well, um, a member of the All People's Congress. Um, well, someone who has uh, been covering, uh, before we go, let's just